I'm Lance Lambert. Thanks for tuning in to the Vintage Vehicle Show. We are in Mill Creek, Washington at the Mustangs at the Mill Car Show. This is the second annual event. It's a great car show. There are about 100 Mustangs here today. Really great car show. And the person that is in charge of this, our show chairman, Mr. Bill Smallwood III. Bill, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for inviting me on here. Tell me, how'd this come about? Well, uh, a gal I know, uh, Teresa Pellucci, came and asked, uh, wanted to have a, a two-day show. Uh, they uh, have the Corvettes here on uh, the Saturday, and they had the Sunday open. They wanted to have a second show, so they uh, got in touch with me, and uh, uh, I said that would be a great thing to do. We have a big show the next week after this, so I um, thought it would be a great fundraiser for Make-A-Wish Foundation. Bill is Mr. Mustang here in the Northwest. He's the man to go to. And, and I asked him, what should we introduce him as? And he's doing everything at this show, so we came up with show chairman. Does that, that covers everything? Yeah, that's a pretty easy way to do it. Yeah, but you got a great staff of volunteers working. <laughs> yes, thankful, thankfully I do. I have a great uh, club. They have a lot of volunteers that know what they're doing, so it kind of makes my day a little easier. Uh -huh. well, we're going to try and make your day a little easier by taking a look at about 100 Mustangs. We're going to focus on a few of them. So do what I tell you to do every week. Just kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. Oh! Jim Kucher, this is a very interesting car. You have a 99 Mustang. That's a Celine Mustang. We'll talk a little bit about that. But the color is unique. Not only unique, but there's something really interesting about the color. Can you tell us about that? Um, this is a 99 Celine Mustang. It's painted Liz Stick Red. Uh, the color was developed by Steve Celine for his wife, Liz. Um, they basically 
painted panels for two weeks to try to get the color just right for Liz and Steve alongside the factory. This is the first car that was ever painted that color. And it was actually a lipstick color that she liked, is that right, and said, I want a car this color? She uh, basically wanted a color named after her. She wanted something really red. Um, and yeah, basically they spent like three weeks developing a color that would please both her and Steve. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve, uh, Celine is an icon in the Mustang world and in the car world in general. Tell the viewers, what's the whole Celine about? Who is he? What, what is this Celine deal? Uh, Steve Celine was uh, a racer and decided to get into specialty vehicles. Back in the mid 80s, he started doing Mustangs. About 25 years ago is what we're looking at this year. Um, and he builds performance cars and he builds them to drive. And that's exactly what most of us Celine owners do is drive these cars. Mustangs, you know, it's out of the gate. They were, you know, we sold to what, a million the first year or something like that. They were off the chart as far as successful. They've, they've had ups and downs over the years, mostly ups, but a few, you know, the sales went up and down and, and some body styles are more popular than others. But the whole mystique of Mustangs seems to be as strong now as it ever was. And then when they came out in 2005 with the retro look, uh, man, did they hit a home run with that. Any, any thoughts on the history of the Mustang? Um, my first Mustang was a 65 Mustang that I bought right out of high school. Um, I'm on Mustang number 27, I think, now. I've owned every type of Mustang except for the Mustang II. Um, and they're all different. They're all great. Mustangs give you a lot of opportunity to drive different types of vehicles. Mm -hmm. As you're driving this one, the performance has been tweaked because it's a Celine, but what is the package on it? What's the engine? And it's the standard uh, 4.6 with a Celine supercharger. This car is rated at 365 horsepower. Um, it's more than enough to get you down the road or get you in trouble if you don't um, watch what you're doing. With the Celine package, you get the supercharger, you get the uh, suspension upgrade and the suspension. What else do you get on this? Um, this particular has an aero package on it. Um, this is a one-on-one. It's got a different body kit than the normal S281s. Um, but it's basically the suspension and the tweaking of the engine that, that makes this model specifically uh, good. And that really cool decal across the windshield. Um, yeah, it, it really does distinguish itself um, from a regular Mustang. People see that, especially Mustang people. They know what Celines are. Um, and I get great looks, great thumbs up. Um, it's just a pleasure to drive. Any car show that I go to and a Mustang goes by, people pay attention. When a Celine goes by, everybody really pays attention. Uh, thank you very much for being on the Lance. Vintage Vehicle Show. This is an absolutely beautiful car. Uh, and Liz uh, should continue to be proud of the car that you now own.
Robert King, when you were driving down the street, I suddenly uh, kind of stood upright and, and started behaving myself, thinking that maybe this was a real police car, but it is not. Uh, well, it was at one time, not. It has been decommissioned. A 1988 Mustang, it seems pretty unusual that this would have been a police car with only the two doors. Uh, so tell us a little bit of the history of the car. Um, of course, it's an Oregon State police car. Um, 88 is when they bought them. Um, the, as the Celine cars you see over here, too. Uh, they bought 40 some cars, and only 15 or 35 of them uh, became police cars. The rest of them became Celine cars. Uh, but they did use them for quite a while, for about 10 years. So 93, 94 is when they decommissioned them. So how is it that a, a civilian ends up with a police car, a former police car? What kind of hoops do you have to jump through? What, what's necessary for you to be able to have the car to begin with, and to have it with lights on it and designation on the doors? How does that happen? Uh, you purchase one through the GSA auctions. Um, usually, they go for about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, and then uh, to actually drive it on the street, of course, the light bar comes off. It's it comes off, and then all the magnets, all the names and stuff are on the magnets, and then the license plates. Obviously, I take those off too. Um, there are some departments that are a little stickier than others. Um, on average, once in a while, once a year, I do get stopped just because the cops like, well, "What are you doing?" You know. But I only drive the car 1,500 miles a year, so that way it doesn't attract too much attention. But for the most part, yeah, that's the attention getter, especially on the freeway. <laughs> I would think that you would have police officers coming up to you at various functions, just fascinated with what you have. Oh, they love it. Some of them like to take their pictures next to the car. So I've got several different departments that are like, you know, posing next to it. So it's it, it's actually fun. It's a conversation piece. I'll tell you that. You mentioned Celine. Were these actually prepared by Celine and then taken out to the various uh, law enforcement agencies? No, they were all or or ordered by the Oregon State Patrol. And if you look at a Celine uh, behind the driver's side headlight, is a tag for the car. And there's another tag that tells you what department purchased the car or who it was made for. And they will actually say Oregon Police Unit. And so the Celine cars, when you look behind the driver's side headlight, will say that. Why did they use a two-door as a police car? Um, it was just, well, back in the day, when cars had 150 to 200 horsepower, this was the perfect car to chase them down. 2,800-pound car, you get a police officer in there, some gear, 3,000 pounds. They're snappy quick. And then, uh, then they get to the bigger cars, and now they're starting to use Mustangs today because... There are three, four hundred horsepower cars out there that they got to chase, so this was perfect for the day. So they pulled the person over, and then they called the big car to come haul them off. Majority of them did. Some of them actually pull them. Uh, passenger seat in here actually has a second seatbelt over the lap area, so when they do have your handcuffs behind you, um, you the seatbelt's not long enough, so the Oregon State Patrol actually put a second seatbelt in. Um, Washington State Patrol did have a security cage, and they took the passenger seat out, so it just depended on the department. Well, Robert, I'm. This is a former Oregon State Police car, and uh, I'm just remembering I have a ticket in Oregon that I didn't pay. And I know you're not a police officer, but I'm getting kind of nervous, so I'm going to end the uh, interview here. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much.
Kevin Crater, a 1970 Mach 1, a true muscle car, and a very nice example of one. Tell us about your car. Uh, 1970 Mach 1, I have always wanted one since high school, and I went looking for one and found a project car. My wife told me that I was really not mechanically inclined and I should just buy one that's almost finished. So I took her advice, and this is what I have. I've uh, repainted the inside of the engine compartment and done some interior work, um, and little tender love and care, but this is what you got. What makes a Mach 1 a Mach 1? Um, a lot of the body lines and styling. It's got a higher powered engine. Um, meant This is part of the Trans Am series, so it's meant a lot more for kind of muscle car handling power and performance. Um, it just, the lines are really nice. I really like it. In the last four or five years, everybody has seen the, the muscle car phenomenon happen. They've always been popular since the day they were brand new, but the values on these just skyrocketed and have leveled out, but they're still worth substantial amounts of money. You are driving a car you could probably sell and buy four of, of some of the other Mustangs we see here today. Is, does that uh, affect you at all as far as enjoying the car or the future of the car or people approaching you about the car? Um, the main person that's been approaching me about this car is my son. He wants to drive it and I don't think that's going to happen for a while. Uh, I keep seeing the brand new Mustangs, the Celines and the Shelbys that are out and I think very hard about selling my car, but I still really like the way it handles, the way it drives, and the classic look to it. So I don't plan on getting rid of it too soon, unless the price was very right. Mm -hmm. And then I'd probably have seller's remorse. So, uh, 351 in this, uh, four speed, right? It's an automatic, which is good because I don't get along too well with clutches. <laughs> I notice you have a Mustang Club of America sticker in your window. Club participation in the Mustang world is very big. Lots of people belong to various clubs. Tell us about the Mustang Club of America and any local chapter they might have. Uh, the Mustang Club of America is nationwide. It's been around for a long time. Uh, as far as the local club, I belong to Mustangs Northwest. I've been a member for about five years. Uh, wear many hats in the club. I do web administrator work. I'm actually the vice president this year. Sit on the board. Uh, our club member size is probably close to 400. Uh, very active. Bunch of people that really enjoy getting together and talking about their Mustangs. Mm -hmm. Kevin, thank you very much. Uh, beautiful Mach 1. You can be proud of this car. Thank you very much.
Jane Manninger, I walk up and down the street at car shows trying to decide what interview I want to do. I saw your car. It's a 65. It's red. It's a convertible. How could I not do an interview with you? It's everybody's dream. Tell us about the car. What's the history? Uh, how long have you had it? What have you done to it? It's a short history with me. Um, purchased it from Hot August Nights auction three years ago and um, left it in California for a year and went to drive it up here and ended up trailering it up. Then um, it's my dream car. It's pretty much the epitome of what people think of uh, early Mustang as far as what's the best to have, a red convertible. Who could ask for anything more, like I said? No, it's, uh, it's my fun car. Mm -hmm. Power plant on this? 280. 289? Mm -hmm. And transmission? Automatic. Okay, what is it? It's an automatic. I obviously am not the mechanic on it. I drive it for fun. I retired and said I want a fun car and I want to relive my childhood. So. Well, I'm not the mechanic on my car either. I've, I've learned to let somebody that knows what they're doing do it. What yeah. doing. What's the coolest thing about owning a 65 Mustang? You drive it down the street and people give you a thumbs up. They roll the windows down. They go, sweet ride. And it's, you, you feel the wind in your hair and you're just reliving your, your teenage years. So every time you climb behind the wheels, you're 16 years old? I am. I am indeed. And, and I shine this car, keep it in the garage, shine it up. But I drive it regularly. Do you know any of the history of the car? You got it at the Silver Auction at uh, Hot August Nights, but did they let you know any of the background on it? None of it. To be honest with you, we drove it off the, out of the showroom and down Virginia Street and over to Sparks and it was dripping tranny fluid like mad. So put it on a trailer and took care of it. You know, I did a little research on this, Jane. You, you, a little surprise for you. We found out that the first owner on this car was Elvis Presley, that the second car was, uh, owner was Steve McQueen. Oh, cool. And then, uh, then uh, somebody else owned it. Then you owned it. <laughs> Absolutely. Then I, I'm among the greats. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so that information is on TV now, so it has to be true. Okay, it's got to be true. Yeah, yeah. That'll be the story I'll tell from here on out. <laughs> If somebody's out there and they're thinking, you know, I'd like to get into the Mustang end of the car hobby, what's the, the best piece of advice you could give them? Uh, look for something that catches your eye and then find yourself a really good mechanic <laughs> and hang on to the car and treat it with tender, loving care. Well, you have obviously treated this with tender, loving care. Jane, thank you very much for being on the Vintage Vehicle it's Show. my pleasure. What a great time we've had here in Mill Creek, Washington at the Mustangs at the Mill Car Show. Great people, great cars, great location. We hope you enjoyed the show, and if you like this one, then tune in again next time. Until then, bye-bye.